going on, everyone? Welcome back to Tron's Cron. Thank you for joining me here again at the Death of Doom. Doom, Doom, Doom. Thank you for joining me once again. So today we are taking a look at another strain that I purchased from Shelter Market. Although this one is available on recreational markets, just not in Quebec as of right now. This is the White Rhino from Pure Sun Farms. So I got a three and a half of this from Shelter on my last order, as well as a 15 gram of Glueberry from the Shelter Craft, which I'm gonna review uh, whenever this one's done. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there was a good deal on this. was actually the cheapest weed I could find on Shelter Market. It was, uh, I can't see the price now because it's currently out of stock, but it was around 19.50 for the three and a half. So I've, that's really cheap. Uh, the only cheaper weed I've seen on Shelter Market is the $99 ounces, which I've still yet to try. I'm waiting for a, a rotation on this strain, but um, yeah, other than that, this was the cheapest weed available from there. Most of their strains are pretty high-end craft cannabis, so they're on the more pricey side. Uh, so I was just like, fuck it, let's see what the cheapest thing they sell is, because everything I've had from them so far has been really good, top-notch stuff. Um, so excited to try this out. And I know Pure Sun Farms is sold in Ontario and most of the other provinces. It just doesn't seem to be in Quebec yet. Maybe a French language thing, I don't know. Yeah, so I figured we'd give this a try. And uh, yeah, let's see what's on the bag here. So we got 17.7% total THC, not too shabby, pretty medium high, close to the 20% mark. Packaging date, whoa, this was packaged quite a while ago. So 2025, so that's May 25th. This has, been, this has been sitting on the shelf for quite a while. That's most likely why it was discounted. So not gonna shame anyone for that it was a discounted price if, if i'm gonna buy weed that's been on the shelf for six months or more i'd like to have a bit of a discount and uh they have provided that so not gonna take any points away for that uh, but we will see how the weed has fared over all that time uh so i looked up pearson farms they are based in british columbia and they seem to be not they don't say anything about being organic but they do use greenhouse grows and they're supposedly decades long experience with greenhouse growing so i'm expecting this to be pretty decent and my hopes aren't super high considering how cheap it was but you know i'm hoping this will be a good uh, uh a good decent indica to help me get to sleep for the next few days so after all that yammering let's crack this boy open see what we got inside White Rhino I have had before, not from any uh, LPs, but definitely on Grey Market or something before. Hmm, sort of like a hay barn smell coming out of the bag. But I did see some okay looking, oh yeah. Pretty nice looking nuggets, guys. Yeah, so there's, I don't know how well this is showing up right now. There's these nice, pretty, chunky ones, and there's a couple, a few kind of smaller ones in there. I'm seeing some nice purple on it. I'm gonna have to take one of these up for a close up. Oh man, I really should have thought this through and brought a plate or something out. <laughs> okay, so we have uh, maybe lost a little 0 0.1, 0 0.2 of a gram of these little bits of bud that fell out. It wasn't really shake, it was kind of like bits of leaf and bud that fell off. But. I've got a decent sized bud here to bring in for a close up. Okay guys, so here we are up close with the Pure Sun Farms White Rhino. So there was two buds that were about this size. So this is looking like around the gram, gram 0.5 size. Pretty decent. There's a nice bit of like purple and dark color. You can see the purple there on that lower stem. And, you know, not insanely crystally. Oh, there's a little sugar leaf dropping. The trim, yeah, there's a little bit of sugar leaf left, so it's not 100% amazing trim, but it's pretty good. And we are seeing a nice bit of crystal on there, not too shabby at all. Not getting much smell of it, but I think we'll get a better smell once we break it up. Uh, but yeah, there was a few smaller ones and a few like this, so that's pretty decent variety for a three and a half gram. And uh, yeah, it's looking it's looking all right. So let's uh, grind some up and go back to the desk. Okay, so guys, we're back on the desk. Actually, to prepare for the next segment. So these buds are looking pretty decent. Uh, just 
by the size and the packaging, the coloring. Uh, they are a little crispy. Obviously, it's been in the package for six months, so, you know, it's not going to be super fresh, but it didn't feel too dry. It just felt reasonably dry. So, how we're going to make this bad boy today. Uh, I decided to switch it up. I've been using the Dynavat Bomb uh, setup for my initial hits on the last few videos. I think I'm going to go with the Gentleman Pipe for the initial bowl. And we're going with the long Gandalf stem. Uh, one, because it's really fun to use. And two, because I've just been kind of enjoying the consistency I've been getting uh, vaping my Dynavat bowls through this stem. It's like three or four hits, bam, the bowl's done. I got a nice amount of flavor. I know when I first got it, I was saying I was tasting a bit of wood flavor from the pipe uh, influencing the flavor of my my bowl but i don't think that's really the case i think it was just the particular strain i had was a little more woody so if there is any coloration from this it's it's very minimal and if anything it just makes it a little adds a little you know nice richness to it so i think i'm able to separate the flavor that the pipe gives me the pipe adds rather uh to the flavor i'm actually getting from the weed so first bowl is going to be in here and of course second bowl is going to be in the old Trap torch, which is off right now. I should probably turn it on very soon, but not right now, because right now it's grinding time. So, got my little brilliant cut, because the big one is being used for sativas that I'm sharing right now. Going to grind up some of this white rhino, and then we're going to come back, and you know what we're going to do? I think you do. You know that we're going to vape it. Otherwise, why would you be watching Transcon? Anyway, grind time. All right, so, oops. All right, so, the weed is ground, the bowls are packed. Gentlemen, ladies, everyone else, cheers. Pure Sun Farms White Rhino. So it's got a bit of like a blueberry, almost like a purple fish, purple punch. Terpenes died out pretty quickly though. <laughs> so there was a bit of a purple punch, purple cushion type of flavor, and uh, second hit I'm already at mostly like a popcorn taste now. There's a bit left of the original flavor, not too much. Right, guys so first impressions on the Pearson Farms white rhino here flavor was good 
but it did not last long, and that's most likely due to the shelf life. This thing's been, you know, like I said in the beginning, it's been on the shelf since May. Um, so I think that's probably a big reason why. The buds look like they were well grown and, you know, properly and matured. So it should have more flavor than this, but it doesn't. And I think it's mainly due to that packaging date. Uh, but what flavor is there is good. It just was gone after the first hit. Now that's experience I have with a lot of vaporizers pretty commonly with a lot of lower budget weed. Um, I think the Pure Sun Farms typically, at least the their standard strains in the white bags like this, uh, usually goes for around 25, if I'm not mistaken, for a 3.5. At least that's around the price I've seen on the other provincial stores because I don't, we can't buy it in uh, at the SQDC at this point. So yeah, it's around a lower medium price point. It's on par with what I would expect for, for that price point. I got it for a cheaper price, so I can't even really complain. But, you know, I would assume if you had a fresher batch, you'd probably get a stronger flavor out of it. Effects-wise, uh, I'm getting a sort of light buzz uh, from that first bowl, which is good. You know, like it's not, uh, you know, the Dynavap is not my bedtime destroyer <laughs> vape so i wasn't expecting to get super punched but you know usually on a strain where i do feel the buzz strongly from just the dynavable that's a pretty strong strain so i say this is still kind of in the medium lower medium range i guess you'd say 17.7 so around 18 percent um the more i'm talking the more i'm starting to feel it though so maybe a bit more of a creeper let's see how the buzz feels after the next bowl because <coughs> this turp torch is good and warmed up now. My cannabinoid receptors are good and warmed up. So without further ado, I hope you got your tickets punched. We're taking a trip to Turp Town, baby. <laughs> so, uh, any other Turp Torchians out there? Same settings that I was using in my last video for the sugar bush. So we are at temperature 6, adjusted up a little bit to 835. Got about a 0 0.2 to 0 0.3, 0.25 to 0.3 gram uh, bowl in here. All right, cheers, guys. flavorful punch there's a bit more of that light sort of purple kush almost a little bit of a floral taste in there Whew. and that just hammered the buzz up to another level Turk two. I'm not sure if that's 100% from the weed. Maybe just more from the fact that I just did two bowls back to back. Final turp torch yet. Coming right up. You can see, despite the huge hits, um, the turp torch does fit fairly evenly. It's 
long as it keeps stirring it. I'll do a full video on it eventually, but it's not to get my so far thoughts after a couple weeks uh, owning it. Yeah. Sometimes it deceives me, and I feel like there's less, like, it's less cooked than it looks like. But then I look up here and I'm like, oh shit, okay, no, that is pretty brown. I should, I should toss this. <laughs> and other times I get the opposite where I see a dark spot and I'm like, oh fuck, did I just combust? And then I look in and I'm like, oh no, that's like just a dark brown. It's not even close to combusting. It's a very, uh, very surprising device all around me, Turkish. I love it. Very much. <laughs> but anyway. Okay, so final thoughts on the Pure Sun Farms White. Rhino. That was hard to say for some reason. <clears throat> white Rhino. I don't remember what it's an actual cross of. I think it's White Widow and Purple Kush. Anybody who knows the proper lineage, feel free to correct me in the comments because I'm not uh, very sure on that. I'm about 50-50 on that. Pretty sure White Widow is in there though. But yeah, anyway. So, pretty classic Indica vibes from this strain. Now, the real big issue is just that it was the packaging date, uh, May, so May 2020, we're currently in February 2021, uh, quick math, that's like nine months uh, that it's been on the shelf, so obviously at Shelter, more people are buying the craft stuff <laughs> from Shelter and the other, and you know, um, Simply Bear and the more known brands. Um, so that's unfortunate for Pearson Farms. Now, thankfully, they did put this on sale to get rid of it. So whoever, you know, if you're ordering Pearson Farms uh, products, specifically the White Rhino from Shelter Market, it's out of stock right now. So the next batch should be a fresher one. Uh, but I don't know if they're going to restock it. I'm not sure. After that uh, Turf Torch Bowl, I'm feeling the buzz much stronger now. Um, I'd say it's a solid Indica. It's going to do the trick for me. Uh, for the next couple days to help me get to sleep and you know also indicas i always say that and i feel like i may be misleading people who don't know uh, who maybe aren't, aren't as familiar with cannabis products you can you can totally smoke or vape an indica during the daytime or sativa at the nighttime and like you know have the effects you want to have uh, <laughs> like you could you could wake up first thing in the morning and hit an indica you may be a little lazy for the day but like it's not going to kill you you know it's not going to mess you up uh, more than your sativa really would. It just might make you want to go back to sleep a little sooner. Uh, but even then, if you have a coffee with it, you can probably bypass that. And the sativa too. You can have a sativa at night, you know, if you want to stay up, you don't want to get too sleepy, maybe you want to watch something, you want to stay alert. Sativas are great for that kind of thing. Uh, so the, the sativa indica binary is not something that has to be followed strictly. Uh, I do prefer indicas um, for my insomnia, and that's what was recommended to me by the nurse. And that makes sense. They do have more of the cannabinoids that lend themselves to the more sedative, sleepy feelings. Um, whereas indica is the opposite, or sativa is the opposite, but it, none of this is set in stone. You find what works for you, you know? Um, but that being said, I usually tend to go with more of a sativa during daytime or earlier and more of a indica in the evening nighttime and sometimes a little earlier i mean if if all i have an indica i'll still rock an indica if all i have is a sativa i'll still rock a sativa and i'll make it work but if all i have is a sativa i have a harder time a much harder time uh getting myself to sleep so always got to have some indica in the house for medical purposes <laughs> and this will definitely do the job that's what i was getting to in a very roundabout way this is definitely going to do the job uh, for the next couple days Flavor was kind of disappointing, a little bit bland, a little bit light. It was good. There was a bit of a berry tasty note, but it's very low, like a one or two out of ten, you know, for just like amount of flavor. Uh, they didn't list total terpenes on this strain. I guess they only really do that for the craft strains on Shelter, so I don't know anything about that, but I imagine it was 1% or less uh, just based on the lightness of the flavor uh but you know for the price 
it was actually really nice. The buds were really good looking. If this would have been a fresh batch, I'm sure I would have given it higher points and I have a feeling I would have gotten a much more strong flavor. So I'm not gonna totally discount uh, products from Pure Sun Farms because this, this looked pretty nice. This looked like definitely, they said greenhouse. I've seen greenhouse weed and outdoor greenhouse uh, stuff from uh, growers where I grew up. And uh, it's very similar in quality, big, chunky, full buds, a little bit of space, a little, maybe a little extra relief, uh, so the trim wasn't ideal. Um, but not terrible, not not like unsmokable amounts of leaf and shit. So all in all, I don't know, man. It's a tough one to grade. I think it's a little above average considering the price that I paid and considering the price I'm pretty sure this goes for normally uh, when it's not on a discount. So yeah, I would say above average, not quite spectacular. And really I'm taking away the points for um, just that lighter flavor and buzz being good but not quite the heavy hitter that I would be look that I typically look for. Um, but it's definitely gonna it's definitely gonna be good. It's definitely gonna get me to sleep for the next couple days until this baggie's done. And then I have a blueberry OG which is like 26% THC. So that one's gonna be fun. I got I bought 14 grams of that one so that should last us a while. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna review that too. Don't worry guys. <laughs> but yeah, for the overall rating here, I think I'm gonna give it a 7.5, 7 7.5 to an eight. Um, like I said already, you know, the buds were actually very nice looking, chunky feeling. It was a little dry because it's been in the fucking bag for so long. And that's not really anyone's fault. That's just, hey, some things sell faster than others depending on where they're being sold. You know, that's just the market. Um, so can't fault anyone and I'm glad that since it was so old I did at least get a discount on it so kudos to Shelter Market for discounting their older packages I really appreciate that I mean no one should be paying full price for something that's been sitting on the shelf that long in my opinion of anything not just cannabis of anything like if you went into a store to buy beer and <laughs> so they told you oh yeah we got this case of beer three years ago you're like well fuck no I'm not gonna buy it now you know <laughs> like come on guys <laughs> So having a discount on that was very appreciated. Um, I'd like to try it again, maybe with a fresher batch. That would be really cool. Or try some of their other products from Pearson Farms in a fresher batch. And maybe I'll give a better, give me a better idea of what they can do. Um, so yeah, overall 7.5, maybe an eight. Really good weed, just really old and dry. And the flavor wasn't exactly where I would have liked it to be. So I've already said that four or five times now, so I might as well wrap this motherfucking video up. Thank you again for joining me, everyone. If you liked this video, please make sure to let me know and let the YouTube overlords know by liking, commenting, and subscribing down below. You can do it on YouTube, on WeTube, or you can follow me on Instagram where I upload pictures and daily 420 videos. So with all that being said, Thank you again for watching, wherever you are, whatever time it may or may not be. You just have a good time. And I mean it. Bye-bye!